representative for Queen Victoria 1897, her diamond jubilee. Okay, so I think uh, I'll have a go. It's in at 15 to 20 pounds, which sounds a bargain, really. 20 to the law, 22, 5, 8, 32, 5. 35 pounds this time then. So I bought that, so that's a real piece of history, 1897. Sounds a good lot, that. The book costs Paul a princely sum of £40.83, pence, including fees. Both our boys have fought hard at today's auction, but it's Paul who makes the final purchase to bring this whirlwind of bidding to a close. Our two challengers each started the day with £1,000 of their own money to spend. David Harper said he'd be flying by the seat of his pants and finishes with seven items, almost blowing his budget at £932. Paul Hayes went in with a clear strategy and ends the day with six items, costing him a much more modest £403.23. But it's not about who spent the most, it's about who can make the biggest profit. And after the dust settles from the avalanche of auctioneering, our bargain hurricanes settle to compare their day's haul. Do you know what, if there ever was a time where I'd like to swap some items... Oh, like, stop it. Stop <laughs> would, being modest. Would you like 70 pianola rolls? Uh, that is quite amazing. That it is. is one collection, isn't Hello. it? I, I wanted to, to ask you, though, I thought yes. you didn't buy this MV. What's going on here? No, 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 there's a story there. I don't know whether it's legal, but I've awarded myself an MBE. So, so does that mean I have to call you sort of Sir David now? Or? Well, why not? Or, you might or, as well. Sir Harper? Is Sir that... Harper will do MBE. What's your favourite object? Uh, my favourite object, I think probably... Uh, <laughs> we don't the jar, no, we won't mention that. <laughs> I love it. Uh, but uh, I do like these stereoscopic viewers, I've always loved these items. My favourite buy has to be the pianola rolls. Brilliant. You're not going to sing to them by any chance? Well, I don't know, I, I can sing two songs. I can sing uh, Badly or Somewhere Else. Which is <laughs> <laughs> somewhere Else. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good luck to you, mate. Thank you. <laughs> the sky is clear with the buying over, but there's a cold front moving in as the selling storm is set to descend. The frantic bidding is now a distant memory and pales in comparison to the out-and-out -out effort that must go into the second half of this competition when it's the biggest profit that will secure a win. Hayes and Harper now head home to assess their acquisitions. Back in Morecambe, how is Paul predicting that his purchases will fare? On the whole, I'm delighted with what I've brought back. Um, the pianola rolls, I think these are fantastic bits of musical history. The Jardiner, I do know somebody that has a very large Victorian parlour, which is a very similar colour to this. Now, these are a little bit out of my comfort zone, uh, this sort of modern retro 1970s here. But that does tend to be where the market is. The Widdicombe jug, uh, hopefully I can go to Widdicombe. Stereoscopic viewers, this is a thing of the past, I mean, we're in a 3D age now, but these were fascinating items when they first came out. And then lastly, the book, it's the celebration, really, of Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, 1897. So I think you've got two collectors there, people that collect books and people that are interested in royal memorabilia. I've gone from 1897 to 1977, all in one show. How fantastic is that? So, Paul is feeling positive, but how's David doing in his County Durham digs? Well, I think that's quite a good selection there. The MBE badge is absolutely fascinating. Early 20th century car lamp. That, I'm hoping, will take me on a nice, interesting journey. Mouse man, well, he's back home. The two miniatures, fantastic, proper Georgian pieces. I've got an idea of where they might go. The bird, I think, is hilarious. The watch, you know I absolutely adore watches. And then the two pieces together, the two bronzes. Well, the period Art Deco style, very traditional. And then the wild and funky frog. And when I first saw him, I thought he was absolutely monstrous. And he did remind me of Paul Hayes, bizarrely. So to sum up, a great collection and not one pianola roll in sight. Fighting talk from David there, but which of our tussling tornadoes will make enough money to elevate them to victory? Remember, no deal is truly sealed until the money is in their hands. <coughs> David is the first to make a move when he invites good contact and fierce barterer Anthony to his shop, hoping to wind up in profit by selling the vintage wristwatch that cost him £360. 70s, 60s? Well, yeah, well done. 60s. And non restored. It has never been restored. And the crown has this stamp as well. So oh. it is the original crown. And not a fake. Oh, please. Oh. Please. Right. David, I like the watch. 
Let's do a deal, David, please. 480. Got, no, 400. And that's it. I'm not going higher. I can't. You can do this, David. 400 475. No, 400 quid. 475. 400 quid. 470. 420. 465. 420. 65. 425 and we're done. I'm 460. Giving you, no, that's too much. For the no. sake of 40 pounds, it's you're going to walk 40 away. Pounds. All right, 440 and let's compromise on it now. Yes, you can have it for 440. You can, but you can't have the box because I, I can sell box. that for 25 No, quid. that's Take great. the box oh, out. Oh, no, David, you can't do that. Box gone, I forget mean, the no. box, you have the watch, 440. I'll tell you what, why don't you take the innards out <laughs> and just give me the shell? 450, there's profit in that. 450. All. Good man, thank you very much. Oh my, let me sit down. So, after a colossal price war, David makes a profit of £90 for the watch. But he can't rest on his laurels for long. Paul is next up as he tries to make a royal profit from the Queen Victoria Jubilee book. Now take a page out of my book. These sort of books are really collectible. And I brought it along to a, a royal memorabilia collector here in Chorley in Lancashire. Paul paid £40.83 for the book and hopes that collector Neil will be suitably impressed with it. It's very nice because it's got the leather, That's right. which always makes it a lot nicer. Yeah. The, the gilt on the side is very, still very it's pretty strong. Mean, yeah. it? And there's no big splits. What tends to happen no. with these big yeah. books? These and also splits. the hinges just inside. I always look at the hinges just oh, inside. Right. Yeah, but when yeah. you see these illustrations, just take a look at some of this gilding work. And it's just superb, isn't it? You know, look at that. Oh, yeah. So. Could you see maybe seventy pounds for that, Rose? Uh, no, that's that's a little bit too much. Is it? Uh, I'd be looking to pay somewhere around fifty-five pound for it. How does that? Fifty-five. Uh, um... Try to do the maths here now. Well, how much fifty-five pound was in eighteen ninety-seven? It's a fortune you can buy a house. Fifty-five. You can't make it around sixty quid because it is the sixty years of rain. Yeah. Does that yeah. sound fair? I've got to sixty pounds. Thank, Thank you so much. much. The handshake secures Paul a profit of £19.17. David isn't one to be overtaken, though, as he drives to North Yorkshire, hoping to flog the car headlamp. Well, this car lamp, I've got to tell you, um, is fascinating. My research has told me that it's actually much earlier than I thought. The early years of the 20th century made for Ford, but made for one of the world's most iconic cars ever. It's the Ford Model T. So what I've done is I've contacted a Ford Model T owner here in Hawes in North Yorkshire, who's interested in looking at this thing, and he has an exceptionally beautiful Ford Model T. At auction, David paid £120 for the headlamp, so will it shine out enough to convince Ford Model T owner Jeff to buy it? Jeff, good to see you. Good to see you as well, but even yes. better, good to see that Ford Model T. Isn't she beautiful? She's a grand car. Now then, if I bought this in auction, what do you know about that? Well, this is an original lamp. I mean, they do reproduce. Oh, do they? Another lamp, exactly the same as this. So how much are you going to ask me then? Well, I thought a couple of hundred quid-ish, maybe 220. <sighs> About 160, I think. Ooh, ouch. 210. 170. Meet me in the middle. Yeah. 190. 170. We split it. 180. Good man. Deal. Thank you very much. It's gone to a very good home and that's just as important as anything else. Thank you very much. Thank you. David drives a hard bargain and the headlamp brings in a profit of £60 and he even gets a lift back in time thrown in for free. Well, this is absolutely marvellous. The first time I've ever been in a Model T and all down to that lovely lamp. Made a bit of money too. So this is something straight out of a 1920s movie. <coughs> oh, Laurel Harding even. Laurel, take it away. <coughs> Paul is also harking back to a bygone era as he heads to a vintage postcard and print shop in Brighton to see whether shop owner Robert will buy his stereoscopic viewer and slides, which cost him £90. How desirable are these? And I'll have a look through those. I'll just hold this view for okay, a I'll have a quick look through. Obviously, yeah. these were a little bit earlier than postcards, mostly Victorian. Um, they do go into Edwardian time as well. They did come in with this particular view. I mean, that sort of in with the, the parcel. Would, would somebody come looking for one of these, or would they tend to have this sort of thing already? I think most collectors um, who collect this sort of thing would have a viewer. Okay. Um, there are, again, collectors of the actual viewers. I feel that kind of, you know, like £70. Uh, 
I'd probably pay, you know. Right. But I wouldn't, you know, that's without the viewer. All oh, right, okay. So Great. Funny. So should we shake on that then? Should we shake on that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That sounds All fine right. to me. Thank you very okay. much. Paul sells the slides for £70, but despite some painstaking research into selling the rest of the lot, only manages to add another £20 when he sells the viewer, meaning he ends up nearly breaking even. Keen to push up his profits, Paul steps up a gear and sells the Victorian Jardinier to a buyer looking to sell it on, and watches his £60 investment blossom into a £15 profit. David is also doing well. When he bought the Art Deco deer and bronze frog, he paid £78. He speedily sells the deer to a shop customer for £100, proving the price he paid certainly wasn't too dear. Next, he turns his attention to the frog prince. Isn't he handsome, don't you think? Really good-looking fellow. Frog's not too bad either. He's got a crown on his head there. He's made out of solid bronze. He is drawing the attention from a very young art dealer from London called Catalina, and she's on her way to see him. But will the ugly frog serve up a handsome profit? Now, Catalina, have you ever seen anything so wonderful as that? I don't think I have. <laughs> You've seen a picture of him? Yes, I have, but in real life I'm, I'm amazed. Really? Is that yes. in a good way or a bad way? In a really good way. I think he is the Frog Prince. He is. This he is. is. Why I came up to see him. Oh, he is, definitely. Now, price-wise, around £80-ish. 